for those of you, can you guess what a descriptor is? Is it A, with a show of hands, um, a general purpose protocol to customize attribute lookup, storage, and deletion? Okay. B, a Python class which defines any of the methods get, set, or delete? C, everywhere and nowhere? Or D, all of the above? All right, okay, so good job, all of the above. Uh, no one saw that coming. Um, so from the Python glossary official definition of what a descriptor is, it is any object which defines the methods get, set, or delete. When a class attribute is a descriptor, its special binding behavior is triggered upon attribute lookup. So normally, blah, 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 I could go on, but it'll be easier to show with examples. So the most, one of the most common things you can do with a descriptor is to have some kind of side effect on attribute access. So you could have logging or debug logging when an attribute is accessed or set. Um, you could have validation to make sure that inputs only match certain parameters. Uh, you could um, have special behavior, like you could forbid deleting an attribute by raising an error. Um, you could check permissions. Um, in this case, we'll have a simple side effect, which is just it will print a little count emoji that will throw whatever the current value of the descriptor should be, and a set will print another count emoji receiving that. So in practice, um, you use a descriptor by setting it to be the attribute on a class, and you create an instance of it. And then when you either call that attribute on the class or instances of it, it will call that descriptor's get method and whatever side effects and return the return value of that get method. And same for set or delete. So you might wonder, wait, why is host.ninja, why is the return value of that a cake emoji? I thought it was a descriptor. So this is the magic of descriptors, is that the descriptor is actually there, but it's hiding from you. So if you try to access the descriptor, you only get the return value of its get method. So it can be there hiding in plain sight, and you would have no idea. The only way to actually find the descriptor, if you want to introspect it at runtime or figure out what descriptor the descriptor is doing or which descriptor it is, is to look in the classes dictionary. It won't even be in the instances dictionary. Um, and this works by lookup, which I had to, I had to cut out explaining that because I did not have enough time. So ask me about it later. Uh, how the lookup chain works. So another example is you can implement. Um, in ORM. So this is a more generic version. This is how the Django ORM works, which got me down this rabbit hole in the first place. I'm trying to figure out how th what was happening there. But you can have um, your fields in the ORM be descriptors themselves, which get their get and set look up or update the value in a database. So that you can create model classes and then fields on those models. And when you access those fields by dereferencing those attributes, it will fetch the corresponding value in the database and do the right thing. So now you might ask, why don't I just use something like add property if I just want to make um, replace an attribute w with a function? Well, how do you think add property is implemented? It's implemented using descriptors. So it's not just property, um, cache property, obviously. Static method and class method are both implemented by descriptors. Um, super uses descriptors. Slots uses descriptors, if you ever use that. And even functions in Python are actually descriptors themselves. So functions are actually non-data descriptors that return bound methods using dotted lookup from an instance. So this is what happens when you define a function named foo in Python. This is um, a Python approximation of, or like pseudocode of what happens in CPython, the interpreter. Um, so when you instantiate a function, it is a class or a functor that has a get method that if it is not called on an instance of anything, um, if it's not set as an attribute or anything, it just returns itself. But if it is, it returns the method type. And it takes that object. So this object in the get method signature is the instance that it was called on. And then the object type is whatever class it was called on. Um, so if you're calling the, if you're referencing the attribute on a class itself, then object will be none. Um, and it will take that object and bind it into method type. And then the method type is when you have that call, we'll take that object as that received it as a parameter and then pass it as the first argument into that function. So this is how you get self into these functions. It's by using descriptors. So in summary, here are some of the use cases that we've discussed. Um, and that is why descriptors are like ninjas. It's because they're everywhere and nowhere. They're hiding in plain sight. And I bet many of you didn't even know what they were before this talk. Um, if you're still curious, the descriptor how-to guide on the official Python docs is a great overview. Um, and I'd also like to thank you. If you have questions, grab me after this. Email me at boy.bit.io or Madeline Boyd at Twitter. I guarantee you, you will not spell that correctly. It's a very weird spelling. Thank my mom. Um, and also try a bit.io. Um, Adam just gave a quick overview. It's an instant shareable database. We're also hiring. That's cool too. Thank you very much. <laughs>